I think they changed not only the music taste and the lifestyles of lots of us uh, back in the 70s here in Australia, but the good thing is that unlike some of the other groups, they come back and visit us again. Why and how? We'll find out as I introduce two members of Skyhooks, Iman Strokes and Greg McCange. Greg, good to see you. Iman, good to see you. As mentioned uh, off-air just before we came on air, I mean, there is so much to talk about. There is a, there is a book to talk about. There is a new CD to talk about, and also there's an exhibition to talk about. Well, it's the 20th anniversary since the release of our first album, Living yep. in the 70s, so we thought we'd uh, celebrate that in a, in a few <laughs> small ways. And, uh, yeah, the exhibition's full of all sorts of paraphernalia that we've kept over the years. Yeah. You particularly, I believe, you're, you're quite a bar bird, aren't you? Well, um, also our fan club, and... Uh, They've encouraged me not to throw anything out unless mm -hmm. I confer with them anyway. <laughs> right. Hey, Mance, just let's, let's go back to, uh, to the 70s when all of a sudden the band hit. They did come out of, of left field. As I mentioned, the sound was so different. It mm. really it changed a lot of things for us. And I think another thing too with the group, when you have a look at most bands, there is a similarity among at least two of the members, if not the whole group. But with Skyhooks, everyone was such an individual. Yes, I think that's what we had going for us, really. Um, uh, we never got to costumes together which were all the same. We always encouraged everyone to just do what they wanted to do. Um, I think that was uh, something that really made us stand out from the other bands mm. and, uh, and established individualities which then could be identified with by particular members of the audience who uh, could say, you know, well, I really like him, but I don't like him. Right, <laughs> you know? right. The and... thing is, I'm, I'm told that quite often that uh, you wouldn't know what the other guys were going to wear until you actually saw them in the, in the change room. That's backstage. right, that's right. So it was always a surprise. And yeah. it was good because, you know, we kept the mystery up. Oh, I'm getting my costume together and what's happening with yours? <laughs> oh, mine's coming together too. Don't right. worry about that. Okay, seeing that you were such individuals, was it always a, a happy time, Greg? Um, well, there was certainly creative tension, you know, and I think... Uh, You've got to have that, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. If, if everyone's all good buddies, then uh, perhaps there's nothing happening. And so, yeah, we certainly knew how to argue and, and fight, but the thing is, uh, the job got done, and uh, I think that's... Uh, we've learned as we've got older, too, to be able to resolve things. Yeah, it would have been harder for you, I suppose, than some of the other members, because you wrote a lot of the material, and indeed you've written two mm. songs on, uh, on mm. this CD. Did things always go to your liking? Um, well, with the songs, I, I have an idea of how I wanted to hear them, and the most pleasurable moments is when the band took them and made them better than what I could conceive. Made them live. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there, were, there were times when uh, sometimes I'd fall short of the mark, so we'd have to keep on working on them, but, uh, uh, you know, for me that was a real fun. Mm. In, yeah. The fun for us is going to be to have a look at this exhibition, which actually is, mm. is running right now at the Performing Arts Centre, and that runs until uh, way into November. We've mentioned already that uh, you've collected quite a bit of stuff, and I know that you've had a lot mm. of help from the, uh, from the fan club. And the one big thing about, for you guys, about the fan club is it's an ongoing thing. I mean, 20 years is a long time. I used to be honorary president of the Pat Boone fan club back in the 50s, which ended in the early 60s. But, I mean, yeah, this has yeah. gone on for, for 20 years. It, it must be a real buzz for you. Yeah, well, I mean, we've with the fans, a lot of them we've be, become really good friends with over the years, and it's, uh, I mean, that's it's just fantastic. And, uh, I mean, Peter Green, who runs a fan club, yes. he's always collecting things and sending out newsletters and so on. So uh, Everything that's available is there at the, at the exhibition, obviously. Well... Yeah, everything we could find, yeah. but uh, uh, there's a few things I think probably got thrown out, but uh, with, there's a pretty amazing collection of, and it's not only costumes and so on, but it's things like fan letters and, mm. uh, and also uh, documents to do with the business side of things too, which are quite interesting. Just here we see some examples of Live in the Flesh, as it were, some of the gear. Whose boots are they? Well, they were mine. I, I bought them in, uh, in America in 1976. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> They're very different, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. I rather blue like suede shoes, man. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Don't step on my blue suede shoes if you can reach them. I mean, <laughs> they really are tall. Well, it's great to have you guys yeah. back. It, as I mentioned before, it, there's something about Skyhook's music which is, is very important. I've, I've never really... Um, I've never known of anyone who doesn't enjoy the Skyhooks music mm. because it, it, it's so varied. So we've got a terrific opportunity to celebrate 20 years. There's also the book, which is Ego is Not a Dirty Word, which is the, the story of uh, the boys in Skyhooks and, of course, the exhibition too at the Performing Arts Museum. So you're back for a couple of gigs, obviously, too? Well, at the moment, we've been recording a lot of new material. Yep. So uh, 
um, we're looking forward to that coming out. Great to see you both. Thanks. Congratulations. Thanks for coming in too. Great opportunity to enjoy music which is uh, so Australian but yet also translated to other parts of the world.